Chemistry is the study of the composition, properties, and reactions of matter. Matter is anything that has both mass and volume, with mass being the amount of material within an object, and volume being the amount of space that object takes up. Matter is present in objects we both can and can't physically see, such as the device you're watching this on, or the air around you. The definition of matter does not include abstract ideas or concepts, such as political or philosophical ideas or emotions. Now that we know what matter is and what it isn't, let's focus on how we can further break down our classification of matter. We can organize matter into two subsets, substances and mixtures. A substance is matter with a consistent composition. All particles within the substance share the same properties. Substances can be further divided into another two groups, elements and compounds. An element is a substance made up of solely atoms with the same atomic number. Atoms are the smallest part of an element that still retain the element's properties. Atoms chemically combine to form with other elements to produce molecules, which may consist of atoms with the same element or different elements. These atoms are always present in whole number ratios. There are no half atoms. Gold is an element. A sample of pure gold consists only of gold atoms and is an example of an element and therefore a substance. A compound is a substance made of two or more different elements that are chemically combined. Quite simply, it is a molecule consisting of at least two different atoms. Dihydrogen monoxide, or water, as it is better known, is a compound because its molecules consist of both hydrogen and oxygen, two different elements that are chemically combined. Remember, elements and compounds are different because elements consist of the same atoms, while compounds consist of different atoms. In contrast to substances are mixtures. A mixture consists of multiple substances physically mixed together. Each substance in the mixture retains its chemical composition and properties. The two types of mixtures are heterogeneous and homogeneous. Heterogeneous mixtures are mixtures that are made up of particles that are unevenly distributed. An example of a heterogeneous mixture is soup, where each spoonful differs from one another. Homogeneous mixtures consist of particles that are uniformly distributed. Homogeneous mixtures are also known as solutions. Examples of homogeneous mixtures include salt water, or brine, and alloys, which are just cocktails of molten metals. Any given sample of these respective mixtures is identical to one another. The difference between heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures comes down to consistency. Random heterogeneous mixture samples vary from each other, while homogeneous mixture samples are consistently identical. Moving on to the states of matter, we have solids, liquids, gases, and plasmas. By the way, the plural of plasma could also be plasmata. I just thought that was really interesting. As you move across the states, you'll notice that the particles making up the object move faster. This correlates with the increase of temperature needed to maintain the matter state. Now, notice how the colors I'm using to represent temperature are arranged. This is not a mistake. In light waves, more energy causes higher frequencies, which are present in colors towards the end of the visible spectrum, like blue and violet. It's actually a human misconception we probably have because we don't often burn something so hot that it turns blue. Red and orange suffice for us, but I'll get to that another time. Solids have their particles compressed together, giving it a definite shape and volume. Liquids have their particles slightly more spread out, leaving it with a definite volume, but an indefinite shape. Liquids are not easily compressed. Gas particles are spread even further apart, resulting in gases having no definite shape or volume. Gases are easily compressed. Plasmata... <laughs> nope. Couldn't say it with a straight face. Plasma's particles have so much energy that their electrons and positively charged nuclei float freely. However, plasmas require strict conditions to occur naturally and are not often dealt with in classrooms. When talking about matter, we can describe an object based on its physical and chemical properties. A physical property describes a property observable without altering the material's composition. This includes, but is not limited to, hardness, color, state, malleability, and melting and boiling points. When a physical change occurs, the object's properties may change, but nothing happens to its composition. This can occur in melting, freezing, evaporating, and crushing. A chemical property, on the other hand, is observed by changing the composition, such as flammability, combustibility, or reactivity with certain chemicals. In a chemical change, also known as a chemical reaction, the composition of matter always changes. This can occur in processes such as fermenting, rusting, and rotting. Some clues to look out for are the transfer of light and heat, usually by way of fire, change in color, the formation of gas, or the precipitation of solids in a liquid. Additionally, we can sort out properties based on whether they are intensive or extensive properties. An intensive property is classified as any property of matter independent to the size of the sample given. These properties are retained in the samples of the same material in varying shapes and sizes. Examples include color, flammability, and density. Extensive properties are dependent on the size of the sample. Measurements like mass, weight, and volume all rely on how much of the material you have. So to recap, we learned that matter makes up our physical world and that it is anything with mass and volume. Matter can be subdivided into groups of substances and mixtures.
These two groups can then be further divided into elements, compounds, and homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Materials can be described through states or phases of matter and hold both physical and chemical properties. Matter can also undergo physical and chemical changes and have intensive and extensive properties.